that was first proposed in 2007 in um, the Journal for Physical Education, Recreation and Dance. So it's a practitioner journal and so that article is up on Blackboard to support this lecture today <coughs> and it's a real easy <coughs> read, Joe Pud says PE practitioner article so it's very easy language, they don't do statistics or anything tricky. Um, the initial idea for the model was uh, developed between Dr. Stodden and Dr. Gouway, who are both um, really excellent researchers in the mode behavior and PE pedagogy world. And what they were considering was um, how, how do we go about understanding the role of fundamental motor skills and physical activity in childhood obesity and youth and young adults. So trying to just make a much stronger uh, research model to work with to, so that we can try to get at the bottom of what is going on because um, the way that obesity is getting worse, not better, even though we've known about the trend for quite some time now, it's still getting worse. We're not making good inroads into changing anything. So, what's going on? Are they breakfast at McDonald's? Hmm? Breakfast at McDonald's does not help. It's true. So, one of the things we've mentioned briefly over the semester is this idea of motor competence, right? What is my motor competence is my actual skill level, right? My perceived motor competence is my idea of my skill level. So those two things don't always go hand in hand together when we look at a typical population. Right? So, what they believed was that developing motor competence, so actual skill levels, so what we're doing on the pro playground, we run an intervention which, if we had the time to test it correctly, would show that the children improve in their motor skills across the course of the semester because we've done lots of testing on that environment and that situation and we know they improve given that setup. So you guys going and helping them improves their motor competence across the year. Right? So if we can develop better skill level, better motor competence with young children, then in order to do that we have to engage them in things that get them physically active. Right? And we've got to help them create very positive ideas of their competence and their enjoyment of being physically active. Otherwise, we end up with this. Right? Not very fun, not enjoyable, probably not going to adhere to the physical activity plan. Okay? And so then if we don't adhere to our physical activity or exercise plan, we can't tackle overweight and obesity because that's a big role. Phys being physically active is one of the major factors that feeds into overweight and obesity. If I am sedentary, then I'm not using enough calories and most of us don't cut our food intake down to balance the fact that we're sedentary. Right? Does this have a difference of like, um, like Non-athletes, competitive athletes, are more likely to be obese grown-ups than athletes. Um, I feel like we talked about it before. I think it's more likely, yes, because someone who does not have the breadth of skill set that you guys have as athletes has 
more problems taking part in physical activity later on. Right? So because you're good at running, because you're good at throwing, because you're good at striking, because you are lean and moving is comfortable and enjoyable for you, you're more likely to keep it up further down the road. Whereas someone who is sedentary as a child or an adult doesn't develop those foundational skills and then trying to learn tennis later on or golf later on is harder and they may or may not keep up with it. So this is the model. It's a little small up here but you've got a copy of it so you'll be able to look at it. Right? And the idea here is that we have a developmental, surprise, surprise, a developmental trend when we look at the relationship between physical activity and motor competence. Right? So what they came up with um, was a model and the original version that is in the article doesn't have these little uh, early childhood, middle childhood, late childhood labels on it. It just has an arrow. It was a little simpler. All right. This was the version that they published along with the actual research that they did um, a couple of years later. And so what we see here that is really interesting to me if you look at this early childhood arrow, it's pointing from physical activity towards motor competence. So what they believe, and so what, and now this model is being used to test these ideas. What they believe is that when we're working with young children, so under the age of seven or eight, that how physically active they are drives how skilled they are. All right, well that makes perfect sense, right? If we have them running around like crazy on the playground, they're going to be more skilled at running, right? The nice thing about early childhood is that they're not very good yeah, they get better as they get towards seven and eight, but when they're three, four, and five, they're pretty bad on that perceived motor confidence of being accurate. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, right? They think they're very good at things they're not very good at, right? So, um, let's see. Grayson in the little class and William in the older class are great examples of this. They both love to run. They love running. They think they are super fast, right? They both have ridiculously weak legs. And Grayson does not yet have a flight phase, and William only barely has a flight phase. So they're really not running well at all, but they think they're brilliant at running. Which is great for us because that means they're willing to keep running, which means they're getting some practice and maybe their legs will get strong enough to actually run appropriate. Run faster. Run faster, actually run rather than so walk quickly, right? If once I can run, when they go to kindergarten, they're going to start realizing they don't run very well. And they're going to struggle then because once they realize that, it becomes less fun. Okay? So, with the young children, our physical activity levels, how active we can get them and how engaged we can get them, drives motor competence. Developmentally, though, this relationship seems to change as we move out of early childhood and into middle childhood. And what we find by around the time of seven and eight and older is that how skilled they are starts to drive how physically active they choose to be. So it flips. Now we have a problem because if we didn't manage to get them skilled 
by the time they were seven or eight, now they start to compare themselves to their peer group. Right? They realize they're not very good at this. And if I'm not very good at it, I don't want to do it. It isn't fun. And so I don't want to do PE. PE is boring. I don't want to go play Little League at the weekend. I'd rather play on my iPad. Right? And so what we find is that children, and also now they've tested the model on youth, and they're starting to test it on adults your age. So when we look at older children and teenagers, this seems to be key. How skilled they are drives how physically active they are. And we start to see a reciprocal relationship between their perceived motor competence and their motor competence. Right? So if they're not very skilled, they start to realize they're not very skilled. Right? And if I think I'm not very skilled, I don't like to practice it, and then I become not very skilled because I'm not practicing it. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy then. And then we see big dropout rates on physical activity. Does that make me more of a kids who know they're not, they're not confident in activity, but they just love activity. Is it on there? Yeah. Um, it, no, because, um, and I, I was one of those. Like I, I'm not good at soccer anymore, but I like playing soccer. Yeah, I was not a good gymnast, but I love, I spent 25 years of my life doing gymnastics. I loved it, but I was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I just loved the feel of it, you know. So um, this model is more about the typical picture than outliers who who do something that's Just unusual. Like it. Yeah. So the interesting thing, the reason that this becomes so key is because we have a very well-established link in the research between physical activity and the obesity risk. Okay. So here we have someone who is very active, very skilled. They perceive themselves as skilled and that they could be successful at doing something new that they just want to try. Okay. And they tend to maintain healthy weight, which feeds back in a positive <laughs> way. Bless you. Bless you. Okay. That feeds back in a positive way because obviously if I'm a healthy weight, my skills are better. Right? It's very hard to jump if I'm 300 pounds overweight. Okay? So healthy weight gives me a positive spiral back into motor competence and my perceived motor competence. Okay? And my perceived motor competence also drives my physical activity. And then there's a whole other section of the model down here, but that's outside our unit today. On the other side of the model, we've got the bad case. If I'm not very active, and if my skill level is low, it is likely that my perceived competence is low. That's the typical picture for most people. And so my fitness is low, I start to put on weight, I start to develop additional fat, my weight goes up, but it's fat mass, not muscle mass, which means it's weight that I have to move around without the extra muscle to move it. And now we have a negative spiral because now my skill level drops. And as my skill level drops, my perception of my skill level drops, and both those things feed into physical activity goes through the floor. Right? I'll do anything I can to avoid being physically active. Okay. 
you guys have said it all semester, you guys are not typical. And this is difficult for you to get your head around because you would never choose that route. Maybe There's very big football players and very big athletes who can move well, but think about what the majority of their weight is. She's not the, talking about muscles, she's talking about legs. Like, like he's a big boy that can move. Right, but underneath yeah. all that yeah. additional yeah. fat that they're carrying, yeah. they've got a huge amount of muscle mass. Right? True. If yeah. you look at some professional pro footballers are getting better, they're getting fitter. Cricket players used to be bad. Right? When I was young, way before Ryan was born, but when I was young, cricket players used to be pretty large and blobby because it's a beer drinking culture, right? And they don't do very much. They stand there for hours and hours and hours trying to hit the ball. Baseball. 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 Right. They don't have to spend the So, but they're strong. So when they have to move that way, they can move it. So we have a positive and a negative. So what the model suggests to us then is that motor competence, particularly, we're keen on getting those fundamental motor skills. Go all the way back to the beginning of the semester. Think about the model that we were looking at. If I don't learn my fundamental motor skills, I cannot, I don't have the foundation to learn lifetime activity skills or sports skills. Right? So, competence at motor skills is key to supporting physical activity behaviors across the lifespan. So what we do on the playground is super, super important because we're trying to impact this. Okay? Negative spiral of disengagement, low motor competence over time will drive low physical activity as those children get older. I think we will find the same picture with adults your age think, we'll see, but I suspect that the students on campus who do not come and play and use the gym are the students who don't think they're very good at moving or actually aren't very good at moving. Right? Positive spiral of engagement, you guys, right? you're way on that positive. High motor competence, you've been skilled for a long time, you enjoy moving, being physically active is fun, not a chore, right? On a nice sunny weekend day. So like at the gym, like people that aren't that good, they normally have to sit out because they don't get picked up. So like, what is this? How you mean in PE? No, like, or just I guess, I guess or down was, here yeah, yeah. in the evening with the students? Yeah, like because you're talking about like people our mm -hmm. age and how do we continue that? But like they don't even get opportunities to, so like what And then that makes the picture worse. Yeah. But like so like what Well that's a tricky question because I'm gonna make myself unpopular. <laughs> oh, wait, Answering wait. that question. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm already unpopular with you. Oh my gosh. So because this is where I think competition becomes a problem for people who are not skilled. Right? Because that setup that you have there in the evenings is all about the team that wins at the end of the semester, right? So they're not going to pick up individuals who might want to come and give it a try if they think they're not any good and they're not going to benefit the team. That thought pattern is driven because winning is the thing that counts. If playing was the thing that counted, not, not winning, not. it wouldn't matter if you had someone on your team who wasn't very good. Right? So, 
That's one of the reasons why I don't like recreation competition. Because there's a place for competition. Competition is a good thing in its place. It's good for you guys. So you need two brackets. You could make two brackets. Well, but if you want, yeah, but we don't want parents. people not to show up. We want people to engage. So parents, yeah. Ah, well, <laughs> that's part of the problem. <laughs> right? We want people to engage. So telling them not to come back or them deciding not to come back is a big But we don't have another opportunity set up for them to come and play with a group of people. We only have that one opportunity. That, that seems about what that is. That's, 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 no. kind of, that's kind of how the competition is. That's what competition is. Well, we want to make everybody fit. Right? Yeah. Right? Okay. Right? Right? I want everybody to engage. When you guys go out to work and you have to pay your insurance, Premiums. You all wish everybody engaged in physical activity because your your insurance premiums are going to get worse and worse and worse during the course of your career because the health of this nation is getting worse and worse and worse. That's a problem. <laughs> well, yeah, you're not going to pay the insurance here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. See you Friday.